Hello folks and fans, and welcome to another short edition of Now We're Piping with Dr. Rockwood. Um, we're going back old school, so you can only see my hands this time, um, because I recently came back, well my wife and I recently came back from a little trip to Montreal, where I picked up a nice little goodie. Uh, so I wanted to show that to you guys real quick. Also, I do apologize for not having um, posted uh, a video in a while. To say we've been busy is an understatement. And uh, like I said, we just got back from Montreal and we're home this week and we've got social events, you know, almost every day of the week this week. And then on Friday, we're going up to the cottage for like nine days or something. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty busy. Um, but as I was saying, where is it? Yes. I went to Da, 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 da. Bladder and Bladder. Now, Bladder and Bladder is a Canadian family, I guess. They're, they're, they're a pipe-making family. Um, they've been in Montreal since 1907, but before that, the family was in, I believe, Cape Town, South Africa. Um, and uh, they were, you know, carving fine quality pipes up there. And uh, before that, they were in London carving pipes in uh, the UK. And then before that, I think originally the family's from France. But they've been um, a Canadian pipe making institution for over 100 years. And it really shows. So um, their shop is uh, right near one of the entrances to Place des Arts metro station. Um, one of the central downtown you know, uh, subway stations in Montreal. And it's still run by the Bladder family and every single pipe that they produce is handmade by them from start to finish in the shop. And it's uh, incredibly, um, incredibly high quality. And I got to speak with the owner who was out back actually working the lathe and um, I was looking at some pipes and I stuck my finger in one of them and um, they have a special way of pre-carbonizing, but it hadn't dried yet. So my finger was all black and he explained that you know, he uses um, you know, natural, natural carbon from burning uh, briar, mixes it with a bit of water, sugar, and any sort of uh, sticky natural substance like honey or molasses or maple syrup. Uh, or even yogurt, depending on the type of uh, pre-carbonization that he wants to put in there. Um, so that was super interesting. It was really neat talking to him. It was really, really great getting, um, you know, getting to speak with a living legend. And they're actually, the family is actually recognized in Saint-Claude, France, which um, is credited for being the place in the world where the first briar pipe was ever produced. And St. Claude is still a pretty big hub for uh, briar pipes right now. And it's sort of like the traditional European home for them. Um, so, uh, you know, and some of their bowls are, are not pre-carbonized. Some of them are pre-carbonized. Um, but I was like a kid in a candy store. I couldn't, uh, you know, I, I couldn't stop myself from just running around all over the place, asking as many questions as I could. Um, they also, um, they also blend their own tobaccos there. They have their own house blends of tobaccos. I really wanted to try the Danish slices, but, uh, my apologies. That was the oven that just got to temperature. Uh, <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I really wanted to try their Danish slices. Um, that's one of their best known, um, blends, but, uh, I, you know, I had set myself a budget and I just fell in love with this pipe that I want to share with you guys now. So I decided, you know what, I have enough tobaccos for now. I think I'll do a video showcasing all the tobaccos that I currently have on the go and also my measly puny little cellar. Uh, so I figured, okay, you know what, I'll spend a little bit more on this pipe because it really, it called to me. Uh, and I'll get the tobacco next time. And also next time we're in Montreal, I'm hoping that I can maybe get some questions going. And if they agree, then I would love to interview um, uh, Mr. Bladder and kind of post the interview up on this channel. So, you know, if that's something that you guys would like to see, then let me know. Um, but without further ado, so, oh yes, got a bunch of pipe cleaners. He just threw them in there when I bought the, the, the pipes. So, you know, 
quite uh, quite a common thing to do, but very generous nonetheless. Oh yes, okay, so here it is. So this is their little business card and they're on President Kennedy Avenue, which is right downtown. So yes, they've been in, in uh, Montreal since 1907. Um, so a nice little touch. And here it is. Bladder and Bladder Montreal. Now I was eyeing a second of theirs um, because they also sell basket pipes. Um, for whichever reason, it could be drilling, it could be that they weren't happy with the grain once it was, once the, the bowl was turned or once the, uh, the artisan finished making the, uh, finished carving the pipe. For whatever reason, they sell a handful, I'd say maybe a dozen basket pipes, but for the most part, the rest are all pipes that meet their high standards. And this one just called out to me. And there it is. It's my first bulldog. I've never smoked a bulldog before, but I was just so enthralled with this. I mean, look at this grain. It's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. And then that red, that red acrylic dot, and then here, Bladder Montreal. You know, you come all the way to Montreal to one of the most famous pipe shops in Canada with one of the, uh, you know, internationally acclaimed pipe carvers and, you know, and it's, it's, it's right next to where we were staying. Uh, so I'm, I wasn't going to get a second, you know, because it wasn't even stamped bladder. Like, I, you know, I decided to spend the extra money and actually treat myself to a true bladder pipe. So... Here it is. I asked him, you know, do you guys ever do, uh, do you guys ever drill for a six or a nine mil filter? And he said, nope, never. <laughs> so uh, um, I can get on board with uh, all of their pipes there because I don't smoke a filter. Um, but isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that lovely, eh? Now, most of their bowls are turned to be a size four or a size five. There were some bigger pipes there, but this I believe is a, uh, it's just shy of a size four. It's probably just a bit bigger than a size three, um, which suits me because it's incredibly light and it'll make for a very, very good clincher. So, uh, so that's it. I just wanted to share my, uh, my adventure at Bladder and Bladder with you guys. Um, Hopefully next time we're in Montreal, um, Mr. Bladder will agree to a short little interview or give us a tour, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, give us a tour of the uh, storefront and maybe even, you know, the shop in the back. Um, it really is a beautiful store and it's a hole in the wall kind of place. It's just gorgeous and you walk in there and all the smells, you smell the briar, you smell the tobaccos, you smell cigars. I don't know if they're actually smoking in there or not, but it did smell strongly of, uh, <laughs> of um, you know, dark Cuban tobaccos, um, you know, just outside on the sidewalk. And then once you go inside, the smell kind of disappears a little bit. So it was odd. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but I digress. Um, once again, thank you so much. And uh, don't forget, 150 sub giveaway. So I think we're about 40 subs shy, give or take of hitting that 150 mark and I'll be uh I won't be giving away this pipe <laughs> that's for sure this one this one's all for me um but I do plan on giving away a pipe so uh yeah um thanks very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you ever are in Montreal check out Bladder and Bladder at 375 President Kennedy Avenue and uh if you want to pause the video or I guess or take a screenshot of this thing all of their info is there. I highly, highly recommend them. And I just cannot wait to begin my love affair with this pipe. So once again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget about the 150 sub ga. And uh, yeah, have a good one. See you next time. Bye-bye.